Hello. Today I have a visitor, and this is uh, Kwabina Linet. Welcome. Thank you, Ralph. Yeah, and Kwabina has uh, started something amazing, and uh, it was really uh, blowing my mind, and so I support this project now. But let's uh, start where we first met. Uh, so through a, a friend uh, that we both know, uh, we had a meeting uh, years ago, and I told you about Moringa, and uh, you were getting really enthusiastic. Yeah, that's, that is correct. Well, after we spoke about uh, Moringa, I went home to make a further research on Moringa plant, and I found out that it is going to be one of the key solutions to the problem that I'm having in my head. Yeah, and it's a solution to starvation, everything. Uh, this tree has a leaf that is like spinach and uh, very, very healthy, and it has a lot of very, very good properties. Uh, and so <clears throat> it would probably be, um, well, only with this uh, tree that the whole world could have enough food. And at the same time, making beautiful areas because it's a tree. Uh, so, yeah, that was the start. And then um, I met you two years later uh, on an African fair uh, near River Elbe. Beautiful setting, sunshine. And suddenly you were approaching me and, oh, yeah, hello. And uh, so then you presented to me uh, your, uh, your uh, big stall with all your own uh, Moringa projects from oil to tea and everything. So that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Because uh, all the time I was uh, contemplating what, where to get money to start the project that I, my dream project. Uh, uh, and the Moringa was a key because with Moringa I could uh, produce my own product and sell it on the market and get some money. So this is where I started gathering money by selling pro uh, Moringa products on the market and on, especially on Africa festivals. Yeah. yeah, this has worked out very well. And so um, when we um, met at that fair, I uh, gave you my book, uh, Garden Communities, and um, then, um, well, we didn't see each other for uh, maybe two, three years, yeah. and uh, then uh, you told me, okay, uh, let's have a meeting, and you, you have shown me that you have bought a huge piece of land in Ghana, 40 hectares, or that's uh, around 100 acres, I guess. Yeah. And uh, so that's absolutely uh, fantastic because now there is an opportunity to make a full scale garden community as a model project. And you want to make it a school also for entrepreneurs, green school, entrepreneurs, permaculture and all these issues. So, uh, yeah, maybe you say a few words about that journey. <laughs> yeah, well, the journey started as early um, uh, 2015 uh, uh, when I went back uh, home uh, to Ghana and um, uh, with, uh, with the book that I had in hand, uh, new uh, um, noise Dorf. In those days, it was in German, it called Neusdorf. It's the new... Um, yeah, it's new, new town. Or yeah, now? New, yeah, new town project, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. And I, I, uh, I had enough time in Ghana those days uh, to read this book. And after reading it two, three times, uh, I discovered something about myself which I never knew. And this, is, this was that fire in me which was burning. And so this is the motivation where I got started to look for land. Yeah, yeah and this was uh, not, not only uh, the well, motivation, but also you are a, a great entrepreneur. And so you really uh, do things from the beginning. So with the land, you started right away. And I'll uh, first show where this all is. Um, because people often have no idea where African countries are. <laughs> so, uh, 
So this is the map, um, Europe and the uh, northern uh, half of Africa. Uh, so Hamburg and Ghana. And now we zoom in on um, West Africa and we find Ghana. So Ghana is roughly, I want to show you um, around here. That's the shape of the country and the region uh, where you bought your land that is not too far away from your origins uh, is uh, uh, where the circle is and the idea and that was something what i really um, like about your approach you chose land not in barren destroyed areas but uh, you said I want to restore where there is still something that can be saved, where we can build on some existing forests and then improve soil, stop uh, the, the, the clear cutting of forests and so on. So, yeah, to you. Yeah, well, that's correct because um, the region is uh, Ashanti, um, a half a region, and this is where the rest of the rainforest in Ghana is still. Uh, there, if, although there's been a lot of wood cutting and um, destruction going on in this place, but we still have some greens there, and that was the idea to start from there and to work with with the soil so that we can reproduce uh, the soil quality and have good humus and then have good water and good trees and to restore also the climate. So this was the idea to go to the rainforest in Ghana. Yeah, that's a very straightforward idea. And uh, so when this is starting, uh, the whole development uh, can finally uh, spread out. So to create more green also in the areas that are uh, very uh, degraded already. Uh, and instead of further degrading the, the, the remaining rainforests uh, through the clear cutting, mostly for firewood, yeah. uh, this would be uh, showing people how to create forests that produce a lot of, um, of wood in a sustainable way where the forest is replanted. But let's start with uh, the first um, things you have done. Uh, and by the way, it is uh, an area that is, um, I'll, I'll mark it, you have shown this, is, is that correct, around yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. And there is a city nearby of around 200,000 inhabitants. And so that is giving also a base for like uh, selling produce on the market there. And there are many, many, many young people that are desperately looking for opportunities to build uh, a good life. And so I think that's an excellent starting position, what you don't find so easily, but it must grow from an area that is not too difficult. <laughs> and uh, so let's start with what you did first, because that was also something that was stunning, because like on your first visit, you initiated the building of houses. And so maybe you can uh, explain what you did. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the thing is that uh, after having the land, the next thing was to inhabit this land, to live on this land and to observe the land, the climate condition of the land, um, the flow of the, the natural water bodies and all those things. So we could only do that if we are living on this land. So the idea was that to build a home where we can live and first observe the land. Yeah, and you went for adobe building. And uh, the great thing is you found traditional uh, handicraft people who could still do that, what is pretty rare uh, nowadays. <laughs> yeah, this adobe, uh, burden system is something which has been in Africa for centuries and the people build their homes with the materials which are found in the area. So it's not something new. The burden or the, the, the style of burden changed with uh, more modernization. 
but this old system is the only way to start when you don't have enough money to spend on cement on blocks. Yeah, that's one of the key things. Uh, the, the imported goods are very, very expensive. In Africa, uh, a, a bag of, of cement is like gold. It's like it's incredibly expensive. And uh, if you can make these bricks yourself, uh, you, you save a fortune or you enable people to have their own houses. And it's also using much less energy than um, making uh, cement or concrete. Um, but uh, the like now the revival of Adobe building that you have started there because it's sort of dying out in many areas. But now you as a successful businessman who has been um, in, in uh, Germany and coming back to, uh, to your home uh, country, uh, you are valuing this and you are starting to, to uh, build houses from Adobe and let's see how, how nice they are. So here we see that we need uh, foundations that are waterproof. So some cement blocks are very, very helpful. So it should not be a dogma to make everything from uh, well, local materials, but to be pragmatic and to just get started. And um, on the next picture, we see the structures that have been built and uh, there is the roof already. And uh, yeah, then the team and the house. Maybe you can say a few words about the corporation and uh, the, the, the people. Yeah, it's uh, fortunately for me, when I, I, I started working on the land, I find out that in the area, there are a lot of young people who are not having jobs to do, but they are ready to work. And that was uh, the spirit which was prevailing on this farm, that the people were ready to work and uh, uh, yeah, would do anything to build their own as, as, a, as a living, right? Yeah, and then we come to the uh, next part that is uh, absolutely crucial. And so water is needed. And so uh, that's where uh, it is absolutely necessary to start with having housing. And uh, you can only grow a new forest and agriculture if you have a very safe supply of water. So this is a solar uh, water supply, water tower and a well. And um, yeah, maybe you can explain a bit how that went. Yeah, the, the idea of water was also very crucial because we were living in the land and we need water also for cooking uh, and also growing plants and everything that we need in life uh, is also water is life, I can say. So the idea came of uh, having a borehole and this is um, how I managed uh, true friends and uh, supporters of this idea of a garden community. I had enough money to organize for a, a, a company in Ghana who is uh, doing this borehole. Because initially, because of lack of funds, I was thinking we would do the th a borehole manually. But um, through my research and the knowledge also, which I acquired from different sources, uh, told me that with manual borehole, there could be a time when there's enough, uh, when there's a very dry season that the, the water will dry out. So I should definitely find the best way in doing things and not the easier ways. So I went for a company who is going to do that and this is what they are doing. Yeah, that's uh, great about your approach. You, you don't uh, do things that are risky. You are making good foundations, not only for the houses, but also for the whole project. And one of the basic foundations is that you can assure to have water all the time. Otherwise, with one drought only, you could lose everything and the whole plantation would be dying and uh, the farmers would lose uh, their income uh, and th that would be in a time when there is probably, uh, well, very little food produced anyway. So 
uh, that's a very good thing to make it this way, even if it's very costly, especially upfront when there is not um, uh, income produced yet. So the main topic in the long run is to improve the whole region. And uh, so as we said before, so the region is not barren land, but it's a region that is getting destroyed and so the uh, project is stopping the destruction restoring and showing people how to uh, like produce um, wood and uh, food uh, and regenerate the soil so maybe you can uh, explain your approach here uh, uh, this is uh, this is for instance um, on the left side we see a, a very dead soil and this soil could be uh, brought back to life by uh, simple permaculture approaches for instance we the top soil uh, added with uh, chicken poop and then charcoal mason and water we can rebuild uh, the soil nutrients for a, a, a great a harvest that's that's the terra preta approach that we learned from the amazon <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> yeah so uh, with with the terra, terra preta approach it's just nothing is impossible as as long as land regeneration is concerned because it has proved in so many ways that it's possible so i gave it a try and i i tell you we've had a very uh, fertile fertile land now that we are growing oak trees. We've grown up to now 2,500 uh, trees. Uh, uh, these trees are called uh, Cidrella. Uh, that is a uh, uh, Mahagone family Cidrella, which grows very fast. And in 12 years, you have a, a timber uh, trees. So this, this is due to the land approach, regenerating the land. Yeah, great. So that's something where the fast growing trees can really uh, make the uh, clear cutting uh, unnecessary. And at the same time, your approach is to uh, teach people about these approaches. So if you are doing that, but nobody else, this will not have a lot of impact. Uh, but the thing is, you uh, want to make this a uh, green school also. That would be one of the projects of the garden community. So all in all, the, the, the overall concept is to have a foundation that is sort of a holder of the whole uh, land and project. And then there would be different um, small businesses that are uh, independent. So that's one of the crucial things so that people learn to work in a responsible way. If people are always told what to do, um, that is nothing what, what contributes to to um, well uh, entrepreneurship um, and so people should learn from the beginning to have their own uh, well small business and uh, the business you will be running you also will have one of these businesses that's the uh, Ashanti Green School so yeah. maybe a few words about that yeah the idea of uh, the garden community is to empower the youth to be able to be uh, the, uh, we call it uh, self-sufficient and also to be able to take care of their family by using their own hands and their own knowledge to build a family. So the approach is uh, to give them the opportunity to build their own small entrepreneurship. And I, as a founder of the uh, idea, would have a school where I will be supporting them with uh, knowledge and uh, due to the support of the university, uh, technical university in Hamburg, Harburg, I also have the support of some professors where I can learn and transfer this knowledge back to the people. And there's also going to be an exchange program with students uh, coming to teach on the farm 
and uh, also bringing new ideas and people who are interested in grabbing these ideas could also build their own uh, living with it. That's uh, one of the reasons why I like this project so much, because it's uh, at my heart to teach people about restoration, about improving soil, uh, making a whole region uh, green again to recover the water cycle because the water the, the, the lost water cycle is the main uh, contribution to to uh, the man-made part of climate change and if we restore the soils we can balance the climate and uh, the water will be um, regenerated in a in a proper way and um, Finally, we want to show you one of the examples where there is already one entrepreneur in place, a person who had basically lost all hope already in a young age. And uh, so please tell us about this great example of a first uh, small enterprise that is uh, rising now. Uh, the, uh, this is a young man by the age of uh, Teddy and uh, he approached me and said uh, if I could help him, support him to build his own uh, piggery farm because this is what he has been doing as a child in his, uh, and with his father and this is what he would like to do in future to support his family because he has the technical idea and the practical idea in raising pigs. So this is where we sat down to make a, a contract and he, uh, the, the school, Ashanti Green School, gave him a small credit to start off. And so this is what he made out of the credit. Yeah, so that's uh, entrepreneurship from the beginning and also the, the Ashanti School will also learn uh, management of small enterprise because that's what is lacking very, very much. So, yeah, well, thank you very much for um, presenting your project. And uh, so all in all, I'm, I'm happy that we started uh, the cooperation. And now it's also up to you because we need support. People who like to come over to Ghana for a while to help, um, but be self-financed. Uh, and also, of course, like financial contributions uh, through the non, uh, not for profit are very welcome and of course ideas and uh, networking and all that uh, will be absolutely great so any final word uh, kwabina yeah yeah well there are a whole i'm thinking about a whole lot of things as a final word but i think what i would uh, say is that uh, i think uh, someone said this before and i um, just contemplate who that is um, I think it was uh, Shakespeare, William Shakespeare is, is said, our future is not um, bound to, uh, our future is not connected to any, uh, uh, Shakespeare, how do you call it? <laughs> uh, fate. <laughs> fate. Yeah. Our fate is not connected somewhere in, in the air but our faith is only connected with our approach to our doing of things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, thank, thank you.